joining us. And uh, thank you to those of you who participated in um, our little uh, pre-workshop activity where we brainstorm the qualities of a great leader. Um, we'll drop the link in the chat again in case you have more ideas while you're listening to your speakers. Um, hello, uh, welcome to our September Building Tenant Power Workshop. What is a tenant leader? My name is Kate Rubin. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm the organizing director and co-executive director of B Seattle. I'm joined tonight by my, my co-executive director and our operations director, Tanya Moore, our workshop coordinator, Ariana Loriano, and some really fantastic guest speakers. Duo Rahima Williams, statewide organizer for the Resident Action Project, uh, better known as RAP, and the Washington Low Income Housing Alliance. Julissa Sanchez, housing justice advocate with the Tenants Union of Washington State, and Annie and Pat, two of the tenant leaders from Columbia Gardens, a low income senior building in Southeast Seattle. So I'm going to start off with a land acknowledgement. We are on the land of the Coast Salish peoples. I would like to recognize that we are occupying the traditional land of the first people of Seattle, the Duwamish people past and present, and honor with gratitude the land itself and the Duwamish tribe. We encourage each of you to sign the petition for federal recognition of the Duwamish tribe. And if you're able, visit the longhouse and pay rent to the Duwamish. You can learn more from Real Rent Duwamish. We'll include a link for them in the resource guide that will be sent after the presentation. Our resource guide also contains contact information for the Renting in Seattle Helpline, uh, the Seattle Department of Construction Inspections, also known as SDCI. They're responsible for enforcing landlord tenant laws, uh, the, Seattle Civil, uh, the Seattle Office for Civil Rights, um, and it also has a bunch of other helpful information for renters. I want to briefly review our community expectations for this evening. Um, participants and attendees are to treat each other with respect and understanding. So please remain muted while the guest speakers are presenting. There will be times uh, that we ask you to unmute and join in, um, but otherwise, please just use the chat. And also remember that this workshop is being recorded um, and it will likely be posted on YouTube later. So if you are concerned about privacy, uh, you're welcome to turn off your camera. Um, so let's see, we encourage you to get more involved with B Seattle. We are seeking board members, uh, volunteer app developers, table volunteers, flyer friends, uh, folks to help us with the pledge, uh, a mutual aid project. Um, and of course, people interested in developing their skills as part of a tenant leadership team, which we will talk about later. Um, and we would also love to help you organize your building. It's okay if you've never been involved in organizing before, we're here to help. We can help you with outreach to your neighbors, agenda planning, relationship building, crafting demands, strategizing, developing a tenant association, and more. Um, we also have uh, some funds through the Seattle Office of Equitable Development that are designated to provide stipends to renters who are taking an active role in organizing. Uh, these funds expire at the end of November and uh, we're running low on them because we've given out quite a few, but I, we still have a little bit left. Um, so uh, if you are taking an active role in organizing, please reach out. Uh, my email address is kate at bseattle.org. Um, sorry, I, I, I lost my spot for just a second. I, I would like to introduce our first speaker of the evening, Duo Rahima Williams. Duo Rahima is the statewide organizer for the Resident Action Project, RAP, and the Washington Low Income Housing Alliance. She currently lives in Spokane, but she was born and raised in King County. She has lived experience with houselessness and housing insecurity. She has a bachelor's degree in applied science, and she previously served as a case manager around housing and homelessness. She's a powerful tenant leader, a fierce advocate, and an absolutely delightful and brilliant person. Um, Duo Rahima, the mic is yours. Thank you. It's like, for having me here in space. Good evening, everyone. Like she said, my name is Dua Rahima Williams and I am the statewide organizer for RAP. So we're gonna rap about RAP. 
So I, a little bit about RAP, like um, Kate said, we are a program out of the Washington Low Income Housing Alliance, which is our C3. And we also work with our Washington Housing Alliance Action Fund, which was our C4 and our community partners, um, our national community partner is Community Change, where we get all our trainings from and everything else. RAP started in 2015, about a year after the Emerging Advocates Program. And we are part of a housing justice network with Resident Organizing Change in Oregon, Residents United Network in California, and Residents Organizing Louisiana. So we're a statewide network in Washington led by people with lived experience who live in low income or affordable housing. Um, those who have um, experienced injustice, instability and or are homeless as well as nonprofit resident service manager and direct service staff. Um, together, we are building power to work on house and justice to change local state and federal laws and policies. And we do this through storytelling, organizing and civic engagement. And we're building a class cross movement statewide to work on house and justice so that everyone has a place to call home. We know that like with any other system that many people who with lived experience are black, indigenous and people of color. Those who are who identify as LGBTQIA2 spirit plus people with disabilities, immigrants and refugees formerly incarcerated, older adults or by season adults those aging out of foster care, veterans and single parent families, just to name a few. And we also know that housing is also part of a larger system of oppression that we are addressing in our organizing work. And we are trying to dismantle that system as well as all the other systems. And we also believe that those closest to the problem are closest to the solution, but sometimes always furthest away from the decision-making tables and the resources. And we say no more we are going to be at them tables because they need to hear from us. And that's kind of what a tenant leader does is they, they're they using their voice and their, and their talents to tell their stories to anybody who will listen, you know, who can make a change all the way from Washington Commerce to our elected officials and our local neighbor communities all the way up to the state level. Um, and so, cause that's important. And a, a tenant leader is someone who I know was somebody with like lived experience. And, and I just believe that, you know, we really have to center the voices of people with lived experience because they survive. We become survivor thrivers and organizers, right? Can we agree on that? Thumbs up. <laughs> so it's like, you know, and I and with the alliance, we do it not at only do we do that with rap, which most of us are people with lived experience, is that as are my organization, they also make sure that they're centering the voice of people with lived experience. So we just like and, and we help them develop in their leadership skills and how to organize. So we do a lot of training through community change. We did a movement building training which was really good. <laughs> it was, it was nice <laughs> of learning how to build and organize, you know, how to develop your leadership skills, how to tell your story, um, how to talk to someone and why it's important for them to use their voice and talents to help make a change. But I think there's really, when we, when we organize together and we use our voice, we have the power of the people and that's important. So anything else? I should be saying. Um, Go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say, there is a quote that you say at almost every meeting that you haven't shared. Uh, do, do you remember? I, I, I don't want to say it for you. But <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's about the solutions. Oh, I did. I said those closest to the problem are closest to the solutions. Can I miss it? I must have been admitting <laughs> someone. I'm so sorry. That is something that really, for me, um, uh, engages me with rap. I am a, a rap member and I love organizing with rap. It, it, it is such a fun group and it is just so, um, engaging and it's a great way, to, great way to get involved with, um, statewide advocacy. I know for me, I often get folks, uh, asking how come B Seattle isn't more involved in statewide advocacy. And that's because well, I am. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, I am. Like, 
We have wrap. Um, so anyone here, if, if you have any interest at all in statewide advocacy and you and we can come to you to like we can come anywhere and do a power hour, which we're trying to do more of is more power hour. So you can like almost like I tell people it's an hour of building power. It's kind of like a Mary Kay party where you invite five or ten of your friends. And but I don't I mean I might have some swag, but I won't have like the makeup and the lipstick, no facials or nothing like that, but really cool swag and really cool people with me and like tell you how you know what we do, why we got involved. Um and, as why we got involved and how we use our voices to make a change and to hear why you get involved and why you do the work that you do. So, but I will put a link in the chat. Um, if you would like to sign up and know more, we do do a monthly statewide meeting. So we kind of hear from people and we have different people come and speak which are ran by our members. Um, we're also having a summit where you learn more and get more skills, where we're going to talk more like, like hone in and like on, you know, self-care and community care, because that's important, especially when you're doing the work, you know, making sure that you take care of yourself. And then as community, we need to take care of our community members. Also, we're going to be talking about, we're going to do an action of doing some door knocking to help build wrap, but also do some canvassing for one of the local candidates up there that we have endorsed to our action fund. Um, we're going to be talking about there ought to be a law. So we're going to be talking about like what issues are going on in the community and how can we make them the law because that's what the Alliance does. They do a lot of policy statewide. Um, so and there's some other bills that we're going to be talking about when it's time for the house and home, you know, when legislation opens, you know, in, in February. We're right now we're in the middle of our conference, which just started today. So I've been on Zoom since like nine o'clock this morning. <laughs> and I have kind of facilitated two. This is my third, like, like kind of like speaking and facilitating. So I'm kind of like zoomed out. <laughs> but it's good because I like speak, I like meeting people. Um so our, our, our conference on Indian homeless is something that we do once a year through the alliance. Um, which is really good. So maybe next year y'all can get that link. And then in, in like February, like I said, we do Homeless and House and Advocacy Day. Advocacy Day, which it used to be before COVID, pre-COVID, was everybody would go up to Olympia and go talk to their rep elected representative. Now that we're on Zoom, it's easier for more people to be involved to come talk to their reg uh, legislative and also be able to testify because they do it uh, virtually. So people can testify on different bills on budgets. Um, so we have, we do things like that. We have rep members who are on the board of the Alliance and other boards, you know, in their communities, you know, locally for counties, for statewide, you know, appointed from the governor and some on some national um, committee. Some of our rap members are in partnership with diff with um, a national house and justice, and they have been talking to Secretary Fudge of HUD around affordable housing. And you know, like we have, we're talking about criminali criminalization of homelessness, um, making sure um, it's not just affordable, but it's livable you know, and, and making sure landlords are taking care of the property so people can stay stable and live in a healthy environment. So we do a lot. We won an award from the National Low Income Housing Coalition in 2021. We won a statewide organizing award for organizing Washington Low Income Housing Alliance and RAP. I, I wanna say that, that uh, um... Housing and Homelessness Advocacy Day was one of my first uh, like forays. It was the first time I went to Olympia for lobbying. I had no idea what I was doing there. Um, and I was just really welcomed. The best thing about rap is uh, that it's just it's so low barrier. You can have no experience whatsoever and they don't just like throw you to the sharks they they really train you on how to hone your story 
um, and, and how to talk to a legislator. Um, all of these like really intimidating things um, are, are just really like simplified and they also give you like a, a, a pathway to actually have these conversations. Whereas um, I don't know about y'all, but I, I have not gotten a lot of responses from my phone calls and emails, but uh, building power with rap and having us come together, we're big. And we're, we're so much louder than just a single voice trying to send an email or make a phone call. We're hard to ignore. Um, so please get involved with RAP. Uh, we do we hold a monthly meeting with Washington Commerce once a month. And we've been doing that since for over a year and a half now. And so we give them a lot of you know input and they have been using our input, which is great. You know, so we learn different things. So everything has changed. They kind of restructure their whole thing. So we just got back in conversations with them. And so their, their conversations are facilitated with them and a rap member. And we change people who do it once a month. And they get to pick this. Their, our members get to pick what this topic is going to be. So it's really good. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, Dua Rahima. So I will put both chats rap. in. What was that? Um, I'll put both links in. No, that, that that's not a good one. We have a different, we have a new sign-in. Yeah. So we used to use the Resident Action Project, but we do have a new sign-in sheet because we're moving everything from off of that website onto the Alliance so we can be just one with everything in there. So I will put in the, put it in the chat. So y'all can have it. And for the, um, the, it would be nice to see folks at the summit. It's up in Bellevue. Um, Bellingham. What did I say, Bellevue? It's been a long day. <laughs> Bellingham. It's, yes, up in Bellingham. And it's on a Friday and a Saturday. And I'm super excited because that's the area we want to build more strongly in. And just really across the states, the rural areas, communities that are, you know, that we forget about when people are re reaching out for voices and not really going to those who are the most impacted. And it's like, we're the ones with lived experience and we're the one with the power and the expertise, right? Well, thank you for letting me share. Thank you so much. Um, and then before I introduce our next speaker, I just wanted to drop in the chat one more time, this link that we had at the beginning of the workshop, we had some, some new folks join us. Um, as you listen to our fantastic speakers, just think about the qualities that you think uh, make a really great leader. We're compiling this list. We're going to use it a little bit later. So just go ahead and enter them in, the, in this link here if any ideas come up or if you have your own unique ideas that you think uh, could be added that maybe aren't mentioned here. Um, and uh, with that, I would like to introduce our next speaker, um, Julissa Sanchez. Uh, Julissa is a housing justice advocate with a focus on language justice at the Tenants Union of Washington State. Um, Julissa is fierce, Land, landlords quake and cry when they see her coming. She is just um, brilliant and kind and incredible. Um, please take it away, Julissa. Wow, what an introduction. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, and I love that. And I do. It's like one of my favorite hobbies to make landlords tremble. Um, and Como, look at me with my Spanish. I'm so sorry. I am bilingual. I speak Spanglish. Um, and um, like Kate said, um, my name is Julissa Sanchez and I work with the Tenants Union. I am the South King County um, community organizer and I work predominantly with um, BIPOC communities um, focused with uh, undocumented folks and um, immigrant folks, um, in particular with the Latinx community, because I am a fluent Spanish speaker, um, as is my first language. Um, y, um, este, gracias. Este, and I'm here to speak to you about 
tenant leadership and our, our tenant leadership program. And uh, that quote, which you might have to repeat, but the quote about um, the ones who have the solutions, right? The ones who who are experiencing um, the the problems are the ones with the solutions. Um, and it has been tremendously beautiful and powerful to bring tenants' rights and tenants' rights information to communities who who don't speak English, who otherwise wouldn't be able to send up to their landlords, who um, sometimes are afraid and intimidated with being called, um, uh, having intimidated, intimidated telling the, the landlords, telling the, the tenants that they're going to call ICE on them if they continue to organize or if they continue to ask for repairs. And um, having tenant leaders who are undocumented and um, um, sharpening their empowerment and sharpening their tools and getting um, tenants from those communities um, uh, equipped with the tools to lead their own communities. Um, and it has just been so beautiful to see uh, uh, tenants who at some point wouldn't consider themselves leaders um, be fierce fierce leaders in Spanish in their own languages. And um, the Tenants Union um, loves to train tenants on what, what tenant leadership is, which, which is just giving the information and the tools to a tenant who is not afraid to speak up, who is not afraid to organize, who is... Um, going to be able to get all the other tenants together. And I had a tenant once, um, this is this is what uh, stands out to us, uh, the tenants union, um, most of the time with, with, with how we can identify a tenant leader as um, a tenant who was undocumented and she was fighting for her deposit to be returned, but she was so afraid to go into the court to demand her deposit. And I told her, everything is gonna be fine. Nobody's gonna be able to um, question you about your documentation. And I will be on the phone with you the whole entire time. And, and I was, she went and filed. She went into the court, um, told them that I was gonna be on the phone. Couldn't really say anything, but that gave her comfort. And she won her deposit back and she got out and she was so inspired. And she said, I'm going to tell everybody that no matter like if you're undocumented or if um, you don't speak the language, like you are, you can still fight for your rights as, as a tenant. And um, other tenants who have uh, been displaced because of rental increases and they're ready, they, they're ready to fight for, for um, rent control. And we give uh, these tenants all of, of the resources the tenants union has and then support them as they organize in their buildings and their communities. Thank you for your listening. And I'm sorry, like the light, like the light and lighting in my room is way off and I feel like I'm like shining. <laughs> you're, you're glowing like the angel you are. <laughs> Ay, Dios mio, gracias. <laughs> Um, thank you so much, Julissa. I, I, you do incredible work and I love how the Tenants Union has really focused on um, language justice over the past few years, especially it's something that B Seattle uh, looks to and admires um, in your organizing. And um, so with that, um, sorry, I lost my, my spot here in the script here. I, uh, there are just so many ways to make a difference from hyper-local organizing in a building, um, or a specific community, uh, to organizing for change at a city, county, state, or even national level. And oftentimes folks are hesitant to self-identify as a leader. They're not always the loudest advocates. They don't have all of the answers. 
and they don't have the time or energy to dedicate their entire lives to organizing. Um, but ordinary people who are willing to come together to improve living conditions for themselves and their neighbors make excellent tenant leaders. Um, which brings us to our next speakers, Ms. Annie and Ms. Pat. Um, they're a couple of tenant leaders at Columbia Gardens. I mentioned that earlier. Um, they've been organizing for about a year now. Columbia Gardens is one of four buildings in Rainier Court, all of which are owned by the nonprofit uh, Southeast Effective Development Seed and managed by Coast Property Management. Um, so ladies, the mic is yours. Let's talk about uh, your organizing. You're muted. Okay, now. Yeah, basically this is not my forte. So I've got my partner here that's gonna help me out. I'm more she of the, when we talk about different roles that people have, I'm one of those, I prefer more the background type of thing. And so we all have our different roles. So that's, she's more of a speaker, but mm -hmm. I, will, I will do a little introduction. Um, we are from Columbia Gardens and it's a 55 plus senior uh, retirement community. And so uh, we moved in here about 2014 and 2015 is when we started having our meetings, um, our community group meetings and uh, things were great. We had, um, Shag was our prior uh, management company and we had lots of activities. We, I mean, life was good. We had our bathrooms, we had our media room, we had our sun room, we had a community room, we had bingo going, we had, you know, dominoes, uh, bid whiz, uh, you play hearts, whatever it was. I mean, you could pretty much create what you wanted. And we just thought this was great. Just like the advertisement said, you know, this is where your friends live. Mm -hmm. And we all got to know each other. We loved gardening. Everything was great. Um, I can't say the company was perfect, but they were great in handling seniors as far as we were concerned. And, and just very, um, very thoughtful about tenants. They, they thought of different things. We live in the townhouses. And so they thought of like having a little area where we could put the garbage without going through the building. Just very, just, just whatever it is that you kind of wanted or thought of, they, they thought of that as a, as a um, aging person. And so they were great. Then we got our new um, management company in 2019. And we, we could see little cracks to it, but you know, you always think, well, you know, you know how it is. It's, you know, everything was great, but then you're, you're moving forward and you're thinking, eh, it's not great, but you know, it, it, it's just different. Mm -hmm. And then COVID hit, everything got shut down, which I thought they did a great job in shutting down because we're seniors at that time. It was, you know, in, um, it was so rampant in, in, you know, with older people or the nursing homes. So they closed everything down, which, which I thought they did a great job. They brought in the vaccines for people that wanted the, the vaccination. Mm -hmm. Great. They did wonderful. Then um, things started opening up. And then we realized, like, well, they weren't really willing to open things up. Right. Our community room remained locked. They actually locked it and chained it so that we couldn't even have access into it. They took away both of our bathrooms. And um, as seniors, we thought, hey, you know, our bladders have been working for a long time. And so mm -hmm. it's, you know, sometimes when we're coming in, people need to use the restroom, you know, right away. And there you had to go up and people had incidences where they couldn't quite hold it. You know, and it's embarrassing for people, humiliating for people. But and we talk to them and they're just like, eh, you know, we're just doing this for your own good. Right. And, right. I, and for example, as hello, good evening. I'm Patricia Bruce and I'm also yes. a resident I'm here sorry. at Columbia Gardens. <laughs> no, you did. Sweetheart. Thank you very much. <laughs> but ladies, I want to add to before I get to the meat of joining folks together and with management that we have, you know, as Annie stated, we have townhouses. So therefore, initially when we came here, everything that we wanted to take to the trash room, we had a key and it was private. We could leave at our back doors and just walk a couple of feet and we're there in the, in the, um, in the room. 
Well, under this management, they decided to take our keys without us even knowing it. And how we stumbled really across it, you know, we had gardens and, you know, and we were planting and we wanted to, after our bags were filled, we wanted to take our garbage and dump it. We put our key in the door. It wouldn't do anything. It wouldn't turn. So Annie is looking at me and I'm looking at Annie. <laughs> then we see manager's husband. He's coming home evening and we out here with these bags we don't want to take them in the street round the corner round the block to the beginning of the entrance of um the development to bring them in through the lobby down the hallway we don't want to do that well Annie and i were standing there trying to figure out what are we going to do with these bags you know we got to get them in the room her husband comes he puts the key in the door mm. he walks in and leave us just right there. And we're looking at each other. And prior to him doing that, we're like, you have a key? Yes. How did you get a key? Yeah. So, you know, two days after that, we got keys. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, it's the unfair treatment that, um, well, I can personally talk about my own, but I'm not going to go there this <laughs> evening. And everybody that's primarily here, I'm pretty sure you're here because of something or a situation or a circumstance in your life has led you in this direction. But I wanted to talk about how we came together mm -hmm. as a team and a committee. Um, as Annie stated, we started um, having meetings in 2015. And you, as Annie stated, everything was good. Every, you know, we would meet monthly and have talk about the good, the bad, no ugly, the good and the bad. So, you know, in our meetings, what we developed as time went on, a social group, we met monthly for activities such as we had breakfast, we had brunch because we had a uh, community room. So we, once COVID kind of settled down a little bit, we wanted to restart those things again. But management went unlock what they needed to do for us. So you know what we did? We went to our plan B. We also have a patio on the outside and we have a grill that we purchased ourselves. What we did, we had our own picnics, cookouts right in our backyard. And we didn't have to say anything to them about it. They see what we're doing. So slowly but surely, they trying to open up the community room for certain hours during the day in order to have those activities. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, we never had a closed community room. It stayed open 24 hours a day, seven days a week with computers. With the prior manager. With the prior <laughs> manager. We yes. had it all. We had a movie room. We had it all. They stripped us from everything. But that's why I'm so interwined in becoming a tenant leader. The more I know, the more I'm educated, and the more I can talk to my neighbors, uh, the tenants here, because a lot of tenants here is unfortunate. They don't know. Um, it's either because of a language barrier or it's not being explained to them properly. And we as tenants, very bilingual here, very bilingual, we will go out of our ways to help each other here. Whether we can understand them or not, we may do the translation to help them to get their point across. And you know, not only that, um, we do have bulletin boards. We do post. We post what we want on our bulletin boards for other tenants to see. We give out flyers. Mm -hmm. uh, we also had an opinion box. We decorated really nice and put your opinion in it. And we, we also had that. We have a monthly calendar. We do that every month with our monthly activities coming up. Uh, coming up. And um, let's see, also, word of mouth. Yeah. yeah. And then we also um, have floor, uh, floor leaders because we're, we're in a smaller building, but we have like we have the townhouses and then we have the different floors. And so one of the things, because one person cannot 
do everything. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things to get people involved is to share the load. And so we have floor leaders that will do um, passing out the flyers. But in doing that, sometimes they'll knock on their doors. They'll knock and get to know each other. You know, like when you live in an apartment building, you pass by each other. First, you might say hello. And then after that, you kind of, you know, talk a little bit more, a little bit more. And so that was one of the things we thought if we had floor leaders um, on each floor, then they can get to know people. People will be a little bit more open and then start inviting them to things or they would be feel feel more free to um, express like if something was happening, at least they've got like a friend there that they can just kind of say something to or um, they can help them out, you know, or or they can direct them to, to me because I end up writing, um, there's about three of us in the building. We write a lot of the emails. And so that's how we started. We, we wrote emails, you know, saying, um, listen, you know, we're, we're paying all this rent we don't have our rooms. We don't have any bathrooms. We have no activities. We have nothing. And so can you go ahead and, and, you know, do some of these things for us? Can we get back what we used to have? And um, their reply was no, you know, blah, blah, blah. This is the reason why this and this. And then it got to be really hot last summer. Mm -hmm. And we asked, can you open up the, the community room and the sunroom? Because there's air conditioning. And their response was to come back to us to say, here's a list of the cooling places that our, you know, the mayor has. And so we said, well, now, wait a minute. We've got people here that are disabled. We have cooling rooms right here. Where? Why do they have to go somewhere? Where do they have to go outside, wait for a bus when it's hot, do all of that? And, um, you know, you know why, why do they even have to do that? So that's how we started organizing. We got together with the other building and you might've seen us on TV. We protested, did all of that. And it's, it's getting better, but that's one of the things we've been doing. It's just drip, 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 constantly trying to get back our power as tenants by organizing, by bombarding them and doing what we need to do so that, you know, and learning, learning like yes. places like this, how to do it so that we can get our power back as tenants. Mm -hmm. And so we're willing to organize, do whatever we need to do, but, you know, we want a, a safe place. Just, yes. yeah, we want a nice place, stable place, a clean place to live in. Exactly, so, exactly. That's all we ask. Exactly. And, you know, um, I found in formulating and putting things together, if you get four, if you can get six, that's excellent. That's <laughs> wonderful. Six people. But if you could get three or four that you know you can depend on, mm -hmm. you know that will be there. And we have people here for different reasons. We have people here who are speakers. We have people here who don't mind handing out flyers. We have people here who will hold and po hold posters and protest. So you you know your neighbors, know what their interests yeah. are, and you'll be amazed yeah. at what you will get from them. Yeah. We just have some people that just type for us yes. and print. They print out things for us, just photocopy things for us. That's all they do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, but everybody is contributing and that's how we feel like it's a sense of community. We are, we, we, that's what we try to, to yeah. instill in people is that, mm -hmm. you know what, we're our brothers and sisters. We, exactly. we, and we have to take care of each other. And then this way, it, as we get more and more people involved, um, whatever little way, sometimes it's just food. Yes. You know, that's just, the key. Yeah. <laughs> Who can be a key? <laughs> yes. And some people, that's all they can donate is food. And it's great. We love it. So mm -hmm. um, anyway, so I don't know if anybody has any questions. Mm -hmm. uh, I know we've touched on a lot of things. Quick though. That was fantastic. And I, I did want to like point out to the folks joining us, when I approached um, Ms. Annie and Ms. Pat and said I was looking for folks to speak at this what is a tenant leader workshop? They both kind of shied away a little bit. And said, oh, I'm, not, I'm not a leader. I'm, you know, I'm part of a community. And to me, having been to their rallies and been to their meetings and seen how involved and how, like the relationships that they have managed to build in this community, I think that's what leadership is. It's not just the person who's, 
necessarily like the loudest or facilitating the meeting. Even I think a lot of times people assume that the leader is the person who's doing the most talking. (laughs) Um, but it's not, everyone has a role and everyone, uh, can be strategic in, in how they work together. Um, and I, I want to say, uh, like the, the tenants at Rainier Core managed to uh, get management to rescind rent increases last year. Yes. <laughs> they yeah. got a bunch of repairs done that had been, they had been waiting a long time to get done. I know that it's not fully caught up, but certainly the living conditions are better. Um, yes. They got I management know. to unlock one of the bathrooms that they, they were keeping. Yes. One more to go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, where to go yes like these are victories and and these wouldn't this these, these things would not have happened had they not worked together um and so thank you both so much for coming to speak uh and um now ariana would you mind screen sharing again so this is um a word cloud of uh, the feedback that we got from that that little exercise that we did earlier. Uh, So the ones that came up more frequently are kind of, um, oops, go back, (laughs) Uh, a little larger. So compassionate looks like the number one uh, quality that that we as a group feel that a leader possesses. and I, I'm seeing some repetitive stuff that, that may be like, um, not necessarily the exact same word, but means the same thing. Uh, action oriented, community oriented. Um, let's see what else, passionate, good listener, anti-racist. Um, so I will uh, give everyone a moment, feel free to come off mute or use the chat. Um, and let, let's talk about this a little bit are you seeing some of yourself in this that maybe you wouldn't have necessarily seen otherwise? It's quiet. Don't be shy. I just want to just thank uh, Annie and tell me your names again, Annie and Pat and Pat. This is Diane. Um, I really appreciate it because you brought up some more memories we've had really egregious issues where I am in senior housing but you reminded me that yeah they locked down the restroom that's in the lobby why yes yeah and, yes. and we don't have a community room in our building but we're supposed to have access to the one in another building and they closed down uh the community room where the air conditioner is during the hot part of summer at yes six yes o'clock. exact same thing yeah yeah, so I really appreciate, and I'm talking to a couple other tenants, but I don't know if they're going to want it. So anyway, I just really, really, really appreciate your perspective as seniors in senior living in another property. It was really helpful for me to hear that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we're going to come back to that shared perspective uh, in just a little bit, too, because that is relevant to some of the ways that we have planned for folks to get involved. But before we move on from this slide, I just wanted to um, note that a lot of these qualities are not necessarily inherent. Um, You can learn to be uh, a good listener. You can learn to be encouraging. Um, You have to work on being anti-racist and equitable. These are, these are qualities that, that, you develop over time and uh, working with other people is a, is a way to help develop them. Um, so with that, I wanna share a, a couple of ways for folks here to um, get involved. Uh, other than we already had RAP uh, is a great, great way to get involved at a statewide level. So if you're somebody who's really excited about um, like rent control, that that is a, Definitely it needs to be one on a state level, um, but we have some Seattle specific uh, ways to get involved. So Ari, if you could go to the next slide, please. Um, be Seattle and the Tenants Union of Washington are working together to uh, create a Seattle Renter Organizing Council. 
Um, and so the intent of this council is uh, for, for renters to, um, sorry, I lost my spot again, uh, work together to strategize and fight for renter protections um, and provide peer-to-peer -peer support for folks organizing in their buildings, build community and grow renter power. Uh, so, so the work that um, Annie and Pat described uh, can sometimes feel hard and, uh, oh, you will? Be? Okay, yes, Dua Rahima is gonna be in town that day. We'll send her an invite for our first meeting. Um, so, uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought. I just got so excited. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Seattle, in Seattle, we've won uh, a lot of renter protections over the past few years. We have the first in time law, we closed the just cause loophole, uh, we require 180 days for, for notice of rent increases. Like there's a lot of renter protections, um, but we're still struggling with staying housed. We're still struggling with bad landlords. And the Seattle and the Tenants Union, we are happy to help you organize your building, uh, but you have to be willing to do the work like uh, Ms. Pat and Ms. Annie. Um, but we're also, you know, small. Uh, B Seattle is really small, but the Tenants Union is small too. Um, and so we need to build a, a people powered movement. And sometimes it can feel a little isolating when you're, especially when you're at the beginning of, of creating this community. So having a place to come where you can get, uh, you can have solidarity with people who are trying to do the same work in other buildings um, and, and give each other tips and then uh, show up for each other if, if you wanna rally. Uh, so the, uh, the tenants at Columbia Gardens, a lot of them met each other coming together for this this rally right we did right exactly um and had we had an organizing council they could have gotten even more support from across yeah. the community yeah. um so we will be holding these meetings uh on the second tuesday sorry second thursday of every month at uh, from 6 30 to 8 30 p.m um so it'll be uh at the el centro de la raza um Roberto Maestra's Digital Literacy Lab. Uh, and we will have an online option via Zoom for folks who don't feel safe attending in person. Um, but if you do feel safe, I, I do feel like it is a, it builds a little bit more community face to face. And part of that is probably because mm -hmm. we provide food and drinks, um, which as uh, was mentioned in the comments a lot, <laughs> that can, can really bring people together and, and show solidarity. Um, so we just got the venue for this secured today. So we don't have a registration page, but we do have um, our email list, which um, Ari already dropped in the chat. So if you sign up, um, we will email you again with the date and time so you can come and be in community. This again will be our first meeting. Um, and then Ari, if you would please go to the next slide. And then similarly, we also have the Elder Renter Council, um, which is kind of the same concept, but it's centered around renters age 55 up. Uh, and the reason for that is, I, I don't know if you caught any of this, but some of the issues that uh, Ms. Annie and Ms. Pat were mentioning about being infantilized by management and, um, having amenities taken away and things like that are more prevalent in senior buildings um, and seniors have different ideas as to what they need to stay safe and stay uh, housed and healthy. Um, so uh, we have had, I think, four meetings of the Elder Renter Council so far. Uh, and so uh, collectively, I, I say we because I'm there facilitating, but I'm not the one making the decisions, but we have decided that we are going to lobby the city in order to uh, get them to create an elder commission similar to the renters commission, the LGBTQ commission, the uh, disability commission. And these commissions um, get, get you a voice with city council that build more power. 
Um, and in addition to that, we are also uh, reviewing the Seattle budget to see what services um, elders need and if there's a budget for it, and if there's not, to lobby for it to hopefully get those services in 2023. Um, so we've got a few folks who are really focused on the budget, who are doing some of the research and having the conversations, and then we'll be bringing back uh, the research, research that they've done and the decisions that they've made to this greater council um, for folks to tell their neighbors and to start, start doing this advocacy. So it's a real easy pathway. And again, it's um, an option to build power together. So these meetings are held on the third Wednesday of every month um, from 12.30 to 2.30 at the Capitol Hill Library. Um, our next meeting is going to be on October 19th. Um, for both groups, uh, all in-person attendees must be fully vaccinated and wear a mask. If you're not eating or drinking, we will provide food and drinks. Um, you're welcome to get involved in both councils. I'm sure there will be some overlap, but also, you know, we understand that everyone has limited organizing ability. So just uh, wherever your interests lie, that's totally fine. Um, but for folks who uh, have a passion for housing justice and aren't sure what to do with their frustration or <laughs> the city's like lack of response, um, this is this is a way to uh, start plugging in and start building relationships and building power. Um, so uh, B Seattle is uh, facilitating the Elder Rancher Council. I, I want to say alone. We're not alone. We're all to, we're all in this together. <laughs> um, but it's a project of B Seattle, and then the Seattle organize uh, Seattle Rancher Organizing Council. Uh, we are. Uh, co-sharing this project with the Tenants Union of Washington State. So I will be there for the in-person meetings, uh, facilitating and um, the uh, statewide organizer for the Tenants Union of Washington, Ty, is going to be joining us remotely um, to help to help facilitate and to help grow power. Um, so it's going to be a uh, really great, I think. And I, <laughs> I really hope that uh, you all will consider getting involved. Um, and so with that, Ari, please go to the next slide. Uh, we always like to end our workshops with an action. And I feel like with this workshop, especially, we kind of asked you to get engaged on a lot. Join RAP join the elder council, join the Seattle Rancher Organizing Council. But also uh, budget season is starting. It started today. Um, so basically uh, the city puts together a budget and figures out where they're going to spend their money. Um, and for us, we see that housing is a, is a huge, we're in, a, we're in a housing crisis. We see that there's homelessness, mm -hmm everywhere the city is wasting money on sweeping people instead of housing them um i know i was personally quite frustrated when i saw how much money the mayor had allocated for uh for the police when that money should be invested into the communities um preventing the, these problems from ever happening instead of just uh punishing people for poverty um and so just telling council where they should be spending their money, that's like the, the easiest and way to get involved in advocacy. You can send an email. Um, there's going to be several um, like uh, public meetings where you can just tell them. Uh, so you can also get engaged on the solidarity budget, which is, um, it's put together for participatory budgeting where they really call on the city to invest into our communities um, and, and prioritize the people who are most impacted by injustice. Um, and then uh, just as a, a little plug, the solidarity budget calls for uh, $5 million to be invested into organizations who are uh, providing tenant organizing and tenant education, uh, le legal representation of tenants in court. Um, so 
be Seattle, for example, is funded by those types of funds. Um, and so is the Tenants Union, the Housing Justice Project, the Tenant Law Center, uh, LGBTQ allyship. There's a, there's a bunch of organizations who are doing great work who are underfunded. Um, so uh, if you wanna see more of this, if you wanna see us continue these councils going forward in 2023, that's something that you should tell the city that you think that it's worth investing. Mm -hmm. um, but if that's not your priority, that's okay too. Just tell the city what you think is important because they need to hear it. Otherwise uh, they're, they're hearing from homeowners, they're hearing from landlords, they're hearing from people who already have a lot of power. Um, and this is just really a great time to, uh, Okay. get your voice out there and we'll be strategizing um, as councils, the elder council and the Seattle organizing council to try to develop some messaging around this, but you don't need our messaging to get involved with this. You just, you just need to have an opinion and make it known. Okay. Um, and so with that, Ari, I, will you please go to the next slide? I, we usually do the calendar at the beginning, but I saved it for the end because there's uh, so much related to what we've been talking about. Um, so uh, tomorrow, Thursday, uh, September 29th at 11 a.m., it's the Race and Radical Policy Making Webinar. Join Race Forward for a Race and Radical Policy Making Webinar series that engages in conversation about what a people centered policy making process should and can look like, from developing a radical vision for change to the persuasive power of narrative and culture and policy making to the implementation and accountability necessary for sustainable change. Speakers include Latanya Sevier and Angelica Chirazo from the Solidarity Budget and Dean Spade, author of Mutual Aid, Building Solidarity During This Crisis and the Next. Um, so we'll drop a link to the registration in the chat. Um, as Duo Rahima mentioned, uh, the conference on end is ending homelessness hosted by the Washington Low Income Housing Alliance um, is happening now. It's the largest annual gathering of people working to end homelessness in Washington. Uh, folks gather virtually from across the street state to learn from each other, exchange ideas, share advice, get inspired and re-energized um, and organize to grow the movement to end homelessness in Washington. Um, so we'll drop a link for that. Um, and then Thursday, October 6th at 6 p.m. It's a solidarity budget volunteer orientation. So this ties into our action if you're excited about the solidarity budget. Um, get involved in the participatory budgeting process. At this orientation, you'll learn more about the overall solidarity budget strategy for this budget season and about the different teams that you can join. So we will drop a link to sign up in the chat. Then Tuesday, October 11th at 5 p.m. is the first public he uh, hearing meeting on the budget. So this is one of the, the ways to give feedback during the budget process. Um, so if you are uh, interested in learning more about how you can voice your opinions or concerns, uh, we'll drop a link in the chat, which kind of provides a breakdown of the hearings and process. But this is uh, the first time to actually make your literal voice uh, heard on, on this. Um, so you'll probably get, they always cut down the time. So probably one minute to speak about your priorities. So I... Uh, condense it down and, and call in and, and make, make council know what matters to you. And then Wednesday, October 12th at 3 p.m. It's the Solid Ground Rent Smart webinar, getting your landlord to make repairs. Are you having issues in your rental that need repair? Are you having a hard time getting your landlord to make the repairs? Uh, this webinar presented by Solid Ground Tenant Counselors with a visiting attorney from the Tenant Law Center on hand to help answer questions, explains your tenant rights and what recourse you have to request repairs. Um, Wednesday, October 12th at 5 p.m. It's the uh, RAP monthly member meeting. Um, Dua Rahima already mentioned this. Uh, please come to this meeting. Um, so together we are building the power to change state policy through storytelling, organizing, and civic action. And um, I put Durahima's email address in here, but I think um, in the chat earlier, she actually dropped a, a direct link to sign up for, 
for a wrap. Um, and then Thursday, October 13th, 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. That will be our first meeting of the Seattle Renter Organizing Council. So we'll just drop that, uh, the link to join the email list in the chat one more time. Wednesday, October 19th from 12.30 to 2.30 p.m. It's the Elder Renter Council meeting. Uh, come to that and we'll discuss uh, the, the budget priorities for uh, senior services. I'm sorry, Lynn, I just saw your hand. I've been reading from my script. Uh, go ahead and unmute and ask your question. Okay, maybe the hand up was an accident. Uh, that is okay. Let me hop back in there. Yes, um, I've, I've gone to city council many times in the past to ask for things in the budget, you know, usually ask for things that other people suggested. And I'm, I would like to see a community driven process, you know, where people that in the neighborhoods, especially people that have been, you know, been in Seattle a long time, say which organizations are really doing the work in the community, right? Because a lot of times when, when there's money involved, all of a sudden, a lot of new things pop up and people want money. And a lot of the money goes to salaries. It doesn't really filter down to, to the community. And, and, and there's other organizations that with very little money, and I'm thinking of like Pat Patricia and her co-worker at the, at the uh, apartments. I live a couple blocks from you. I'd love to, to, to meet and have coffee with you ladies sometime. Yeah. On me, on me. Because um, I was so inspired. I, 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 I was at the bank the day you had the demonstration and I, I was oh, in awe. Okay. Because my neighbors upstairs from me, I live at the Byron Wetmore Apartments. It's just a couple blocks north of you. And my neighbor's uh, mother lived in lived there for just one year and moved out because of the management. And also, mm -hmm. she felt like it wasn't safe for people mm -hmm. there. Okay, okay. And and I so, but I, I won't hog the meetings anymore. I just wanted to plug an organization that nobody ever talks about. But they're doing, they're really serving the community. And that's Rainier Beach Action Coalition. They have so much going on. And they have so many people. Mm -hmm. I just meet people that have graduated from that program. They're in and those are the kind of organizations I want to see funded. You know, not just people that have loud voices, right? That don't really get other people involved. So I'm just wondering if there's a process where you, you leaders, especially the paid organizers, are finding out, like, from people that live in the community, what's really working? Because sometimes it's not the quote-unquote sexiest thing there is, you know? Like the Boys and Girls Club, I've met so many, you know, everybody thinks, oh, that's not radical enough, you know? But I actually know somebody from when I lived in San Francisco and her son, you know, she didn't, she was a single mom, but he was in the Boys and Girls Club. And I find out all these years later, he's like in his 40s now, and he's a black farmer that owns his own land oh, in, wow. San, in, in California. Wow. And I'm thinking these were the programs his mom got him in when he's a kid. And he's this amazing, is amazing man now. So that, you know, that's what I just wanted to say. And I'd love to talk more. I, de I definitely want to get together with Patricia, though, and, and, and a co-worker of Patricia, because I want to see one name here. I forgot. Oh, OK. Annie. Yeah. Annie. My, Patricia. my friend and neighbor. Yes. yes. Yeah. We yes. Will. We, we will. will. We will. OK, great. OK. Um, so, Lynn, with that, I think. Uh, the solidarity budget is actually a really great way to get involved with the, the participatory budgeting um, because they do ask for community feedback and they, they don't make the budget for the city, but they do have a lot of uh, community input and support. And if you look at their list of endorsers over the past couple of yeah. years, you'll see um, probably a lot of the, the organizations that you think deserve funding. Yeah. Um, 
which uh, like, so for example, be Seattle, we are a very small organization. Uh, we have two full-time and two part-time employees. And uh, this is the biggest we've ever been. Um, and, and, but they still asked for our opinion. And so, uh, you know, that, that the $5 million towards tenant services is going to be split up a lot of different ways. And probably there won't be $5 million, but they asked for it. And they, they, they asked us, how much money do you think you need to, to do your jobs efficiently and to grow and to ensure that your staff members are earning a living wage? Um, I know uh, Ms. Annie was a little horrified when she found out that, uh, you know, we don't have retirement plans and yes. are not quite earning yes. a living yes. wage. <laughs> I don't have a retirement plan either. I've never been paid for organizing oh, work I've done. Oh, no. And I, oh, I was once uh, the president of the Resident Action Council of Seattle Housing Authority, like that, you know, which was the tenant group that when I lived there. But, you know, I, I definitely support the tenants organizations getting it. But I, what I'm always leery of is people that have political aspirations that get involved and, and want money. And then they'll start their own organization, which is duplicating work already being done. You know what I mean? Like by B Seattle and Tenants Union, you don't need 20 other large tenant organizations to do that because it, it just divides the money yes um well and that that's why uh the the part of the the messaging around the solidarity budget uh back in 2020 um was that community organizations shouldn't be competing for funds there's enough funding in the city that the ones who are, are doing this work should have enough funding, but we are wasting money on things like um, police and uh, their military grade weapons that they were using against the, you know, the people of Seattle. Uh, so so there, I really encourage you to go to that volunteer meeting and learn more about the Solidarity Budget because it's so participatory. Mm -hmm. um, and be, because they they continuously ask for community input, um, and they ask a lot of these organizations who are are doing this on the ground work, what they need to thrive. Um, and then, as far as the uh, you know duplicative work, that's an excellent point. Um, I will say that like the tenants union in B Seattle, we have a lot of overlap as we're, we're both doing tenant organizing. However, uh, there are some core differences. The tenants union does tenant counseling. Um, B Seattle does organizing. And then we also tie our work into uh, mutual aid work. Um, I say in rap, we don't do any direct service. So we do a lot of organizing and advocacy around laws. Yes, well, and speaking of duplicative, that's part of the reason that B Seattle has uh, not taken a lead and has no intention of taking a lead on statewide organizing mm -hmm. um, because there's already statewide organizations like RAP and like the Tenants Union who are doing this work. Um, so just just putting that out there, if you're seeing like other orgs, like there, there's a lot. and. And I happen to know the, the Puget Sound Tenants Union, um, who are a completely autonomous tenants union. They do not have any city funding and they're volunteer run. Um, they're also like, really incredible organizers. And so I don't want to like downplay the idea of like sometimes orgs are doing similar work, but uh, we're not competing with each other. We're all fighting yeah. for justice. Uh, I forgot where I left off. Can anyone? I had my hand up. I was. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I didn't want to just interrupt. Um, I wanted to um, say that yeah, Lynn makes a lot of good points. There are sometimes um, individuals or groups that uh, start out as a volunteer group, and then they really do have more political aspirations. But the big thing for me is keep in mind that this. I just heard that this is a seven billion, a billion with a B dollar budget. So even if we ask for 5 million, it's not even gonna be on the pie chart. It's such a small amount. So 
um, I have seen senior groups go to budget meetings over the last 20 years begging for crumbs mm. and sometimes not even getting crumbs. <laughs> so any the, the biggest ask that we can think to do and have the confidence to ask for is still a crumb in a $7 billion budget. Wow. Thank you. Yes. Thanks. Yes, and I, I loved hearing yes. both Ms. Annie and Ms. Pack go, mm. Yes. <laughs> As you were saying that, because it's so accurate. <laughs> and, 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 and Kate, one thing I have a, a dream of like <laughs> happening is like neighborhood conversations, you know. Um, I was amazed, you know, I've been living down in Rainier Valley now for 15 years. And um, all, all the people in, in, in my building, they're all uh, people of color and immigrants, you know, that are low income, raising mm -hmm. families. And I was very surprised that they actually have a different agenda than a lot of the loud activists you see in, in the marches and stuff like that. Like mm -hmm. they were really upset about like rich white kids, to be honest with you that wanted to defund the police completely. And I agree with you about the, the loss of military weapon, you know, that stuff's got to go, right? So I'm going to, I'm going to, what they want, right what there. they want. And, and, right. and you, I'd like to see conversations. So Lynn, I'm going to mute you for just one moment because I don't really want to get into like the, the, the wider spectrum of what these conversations need to be. I just want to say that that's part of the reason that we developed these two councils is to make sure that the people who are directly impacted, um, and in this instance, specifically renters and housing injustice, because that's where we have the expertise and knowledge. Uh, but we're trying to, to make sure that there is this space for people to have these conversations, um, because it's, it's who's, who's able to step up and lean and sometimes the people who are the loudest are not the ones who are most impacted. That's something that's like the reverse of what Dua Rahima was saying. So um, I, I understand and I agree with you. I just don't want to get into the uh, merits or problems with defunding the police. Um, and I will make it very clear that I, uh, as the organizing director of East Seattle and an abolitionist, I believe that there are um, better ways to uh, get justice in our community. And I believe that the police don't uh, prevent crime. Uh, so I think it's, um, we, we have the power as a community. Uh, so I just wanted to make that clear as somebody who's leading both of these organizations that I, I bring that to, to, to my work. Um, anyway, so with that, I, I think I left off on the Elder Winter Council meeting where we're, we're going to talk about the budget um, and specifically getting some uh, services for seniors. Um, that'll be Wednesday, October 19th, 12.30 p.m. at the Capitol Hill Library. I, and, and you're still doing it on Zoom, correct? That's correct. I didn't hear you mention it before to make sure that seniors who can't go in person can yes. access it on Zoom. Thank you. Yes. Thank, thank you for mentioning that, Diane. Um, yes, both the Elder Council and the Seattle Renter Organizing C Council will have uh, an option to join via Zoom. Last month was our first hybrid meeting and I did not have the right equipment and my laptop died. Uh, but the right equipment has been purchased. We are ready to do hybrid going forward. Um, so, okay, next thing on the agenda. Um, Thursday, October 20th from 6 to 8 p.m. It's the Tenants Union of Washington's annual membership meeting. Learn what TU membership is about, celebrate housing justice champions, and discover their current campaigns and how to get involved. TU members will have an opportunity to vote on new board members during the final portion of the event. However, it's not required to be a TU member to enjoy the meeting. All are welcome. Interpretation um, in Spanish and ASL will be provided in addition to live captioning in English. Uh, Friday, October 21st and Saturday, October 22nd um, in Bellingham and online via Zoom. It's the uh, RAP Summit for Homes as Dua Rima mentioned earlier. 
Join your fellow advocates and organizers for the seventh resident action uh, project summit for homes. We gather resident leaders and nonprofit residential staff from across the state of Washington to build skills and mobilize around housing priorities for the coming legislative session. Um, so if you can't make it to the event in Bellingham, you have the option to participate through Zoom. We'll post a link to the registration in the chat. If you are planning on coming in person, uh, make sure you register ASAP so we can uh, account, for, account for you. Um, and then finally, Wednesday, October 26th at 6 p.m. Um, is B Seattle's next building tenant power workshop, Solidarity in Student Housing. Whether you're living on or off campus, having safe, stable, affordable housing is vital for students. Are you tired of your landlord not listening? Do you feel like you were being treated like a second class citizen? Have you been in a difficult housing situation where you just don't know what to do? Uh, join us for a conversation with students we'll, where we'll discuss student tenant rights, social housing, and the forming of a work group working towards a student community land trust. The time is long overdue for students to assert their rights and have access to long-term equity in their housing. Um, okay, that there's a lot of information there, um, but we are really excited and we hope that you'll join us for some of these events. And thank you so much to our speakers, Duo Rahima, um, Julissa Sanchez, and Ms. Patty and Ms. Oh, sorry, Ms. Pat and Ms. Annie. I combine them into one one name. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs>